Overhead mics are really important, and you might ask yourself why. Yes, it's because they do pick up and mic the cymbals, but I wouldn't think of overheads as just cymbal mics. Overheads give a full picture of the drum set, and they capture the drum set pretty close to how we actually hear the drums in whatever room we're in. Close mics, like snare mics and tom mics and kick mics, they're there to give mix engineers ultimate control in a mix to dial in the drums, but close mics by themselves sound really like claustrophobic and weird. In in contrast, overheads get a whole stereo image of the drum kit and glue everything together. So they're really important. And that's why today we're gonna test $8,000 worth of overhead mics and see whether or not paying more for overhead mics gets you a better result. Now I tested six different pairs of overhead mics, the cheapest pair being $500 and the most expensive pair being $2,200. And we're really gonna see what sounds the best, and what is the best value. Now, I have to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Zounds. They sent me five pairs of these mics. I had the sixth pair here at the studio already, but I would not have been able to do this test without them. So huge thanks to them. And today, the mics that we're gonna be checking out are the Neumann KM184s, SE Electronics SE8s, Warm Audio WA14s, AKG C414 XLS, Loudon Audio LA320, and a pair of the Warm Audio WA67s. Now, if you're interested in any of these mics, checking them out yourself, you can head over to Zounds. I've put links in the description for all the mics we're gonna check out today. So click on those, head over to their site, and check these mics out. So let's hear each pair of overhead mics. For this mix, all you're gonna hear is the overheads themselves. There's no close mics, there's nothing else, and there's also no EQ or compression. So it's gonna take about two minutes to listen through each pair of overheads. I'm gonna play the same exact thing for each pair, and over those two minutes, here's what I'd be listening for between the different sets of overheads. I'd be listening, how do the cymbals sound? Do they sound natural? How natural do the drums sound? How bright versus how dark are the mics compared to the other sets in the you know shootout? And are there any frequencies that you find harsh or like out of balance with each pair of overheads? All right, so let's hear each pair of overheads by themselves. Here we go. So there they are. And by the way, if you wanna take a more critical listen and pull this stuff up and mess around with it yourself, I've provided the stems of this session for free in the description below. So if you wanna download these files and mess around with them yourself to get a better idea of you know, what you're looking at, you can download the stems of this session for free in the description below. So before I give you kind of my reaction to these, I wanna talk about why I picked each pair of mics to go into this kind of little test. So within this test, not only do we have six pairs of mics, but we have three different 
types of microphone or kind of mic categories. We have small diaphragm condensers, we have large diaphragm condensers, and we have large diaphragm tube condensers. And within each of those three categories, we have two pairs, kind of a budget pair of overhead microphones, and we have a kind of more expensive premium pair of microphones within those categories. In the small diaphragm condenser category, we have the SE8s, which are about $500 a pair, and we have the KM184s, which are about $1,600 a pair, which is an $1,100 difference. In the large diaphragm condenser category, we have the AKG C414, for about $2,200 a pair, and we have the Warm Audio 14s for $650 a pair. And the WA-14s are actually modeled after, or they're a clone of the C414s. So in this category, you kind of have the $2,200 real pair of microphones, and then you have the clone, warm audio clone pair, and there's a $1,500 difference between the two. So does the $1,500, is it worth it? And in the tube condenser category, we have the Loudon LA320s for $1,200 a pair, and we have the WA67s for $1,800 a pair. So there's a $600 difference there. So my goal with this test wasn't, you know, just let's find the best mic, but it really was, what's the best value for the money you're spending with these mics? Now, with all that in mind, we're gonna play these clips one more time. And what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna blend in the close mics. I think it's really important to not just think about overheads as soloed by themselves because no one's ever gonna hear them like that. They're only ever gonna hear them in a mix. So let's hear how these overheads blend in with the rest of the drums. And I didn't include room mics or any other kind of like color mics. It's just gonna be overheads and close mics. And again, there's still no EQ or compression on anything. It's just gonna be, you know, kind of move the faders up and let's hear how they sound. Okay, so now I'm gonna tell you what I personally think. And you know, again, if you haven't made up your mind yet, you can download the stems for this session and check them out yourself. But at this point, you probably have your mind made up on which you liked the best. And keep in mind that, you know, your mic preference is totally subjective. It's all about your room and your setup and the kind of music you play and, you know, what you're usually recording. So, you know, this is all just my opinion, but uh, here's how I kind of landed with this test. Overall, I think I decided that I don't really love small diaphragm condenser microphones as overheads in general. Now, that comes with a caveat. If I was doing a thing where I had like a mono overhead mic in the center of the drums that was kind of doing like, you know, it was like a ribbon mic or a large diaphragm that was like dark and moody and vibey. In that case, if I had a mono overhead doing that, then I probably would want a pair of small diaphragm condensers to pick up the brightness and the symbols and stuff like that so you could blend those in. But in general, as daily drivers, just general overheads or up over the drums, 
I don't think I prefer small diaphragm condensers. In the category of the small diaphragm condensers between the SE8s and the KM184s, I think the SE8s are a way better value. I do think that the KM184s had like a cleaner top end and they have a kind of a cooler mid-range thing going on, but I do not think it's worth spending $1,100 more. I think if you get the SE8s, you're gonna be just as happy and you're gonna be over $1,000 richer. So I personally wouldn't spend money on the KM184s if you were deciding between these two pairs of small diaphragm condensers. Now, with the four mics remaining, we have the large diaphragm condensers and we have the tube condensers. And between those two categories, I think I preferred both of the large diaphragm tube condenser mics than the just normal large diaphragm mics. That said, in the large diaphragm kind of C414 versus WA14 category, I do think that the C414s do sound a little better. Again, I think they have a slightly cleaner top end and they have a cool mid-range thing, but I, I do not think the C414s are worth paying an extra $1,500 you could buy the w, WA-14s. You're gonna be just as happy. They're gonna do exactly what you wanted C414s to do. You're just gonna save 1500 bucks. So if it was between the two, if you really like the large diaphragm condenser C414 thing, and you want that for yourself, I would buy the warm audio because the C414s, even though they were slightly better, to me, they were not $1,500 better. And finally, we have our last category and my favorite category, the tube condenser category. And this was a really tough one for me. Like I said, I like both pairs of tube condenser mics better than anything else. And on first listen, I think I favored the Loughton mics because they had, naturally they had a lot more top end and a lot more brightness. And uh, that just kind of jumped out at me and I kind of liked that better, especially when you blend in the close mics, I felt like the Loughton's just kind of naturally had the brightness you want out of overheads. However, with the Loughton's, when I started to add EQ and add top end EQ, I found that they got really harsh and really thin and really brittle and kind of unpleasant to listen to. And I, I, I know what you're saying. You're saying, well, if you thought the Loughton's had enough brightness naturally, why were you adding EQ and messing them up? And I, I get you, but the reason I was doing it is because I, I would bet everything that one day, maybe soon, I'm gonna send, I'm gonna record drums for someone's project, I'm gonna send them to an engineer, and that engineer, because this is what they do for every mix, they're going to pull up my overhead file, they're gonna put an EQ on, and they're gonna rack a shelf at 8K or 10K, and at that point, they're doing it because that's what they do for every overhead because they're just kind of running stuff through their assembly line, which I get, you know, speed is part of the game here. But at that point, those Loughton mics that I used are gonna become a real problem for them and they're gonna start working against me because they're gonna put that EQ in there and go, oh, I do this for every overhead, but these sound terrible. So to me, that's kind of a scary situation to uh, put out into the world, you know, my files with, you know, something that potentially could add some harshness into the mix. Now, on the other hand, with the Warm Audio 67s, I, out of the box, just listening to them raw, I loved the mid-range they had. I thought they were amazing, the like body they had, but I did find them like really dark. But when I started to add EQ, I was kind of blown away by how much like high end, high frequency EQ I could add without them getting harsh at all. At one point, just to kind of see what happens, I put an EQ on the WA67s and I added like a shelf at 10K or 8K of like 15 dB. And they didn't sound harsh, which to me is like amazing and I totally love. So to me, the WA67s were kind of the the richest, the smoothest, the most buttery, and I think the most versatile. And to me, if it's between the WA67s and the Loughton 320s, for me, I would much rather with the warm audio have to add some high end always to kind of like get them to, you know, be as bright as I want. I'd much rather have to do that than to have the Loughton's kind of adding harshness and kind of brittleness that I have to be careful of and manage. That is a lot scarier to me than just having to, you know, put some 
you know, high frequency EQ on the overheads to get them to be a little bit brighter. So for me, I'm sticking with the WA-67s. But what was your favorite? I'd love to hear from you in the comments which pair of overheads you liked the most. And if there was a pair that you thought I should have in here, put those below in the comments too. I'd love to do another one of these because it's super fun to me and I learned a lot. Put that down in the comments. I would also love it if you could like this video if you got something out of it. And if you enjoy content like this, Subscribe to the channel. I got a lot of stuff like this on my channel already and I'm gonna come out with more of it. Huge thanks to Zounds again for providing these mics. I, I could not have spent $8,000 on mics just to kind of see what they sound like. So I couldn't have done this without them. Thanks again. And again, every mic we talked about today are down in the description. So you can click on those links, go over to Zounds, check them out yourself. I'm gonna play us out and I'm gonna, let's hear these WA67s in the context of full mix and music and everything. Cause I think that's, you know, how they're gonna live for the next little bit here in my studio.